Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Keisha. I blog every day at kjaggers.com. That link is below. So this is another pre-recorded video that I'm sharing with you guys for our 2015 travel series. So we have, you know, a big vacation plan this year. I consider a cruise a big vacation. And, you know, we usually take family vacations every year anyway. But I thought this would be a good time to update my travel series um, for 2015. So today it is overcast and rainy. I'm sorry about the lighting if it doesn't look well on camera. But I wanted to talk to you about my tips for budgeting and, you know, my general tips for vacation and travel. Now, I've already done a lot of these flying tips, um, other travel tips. I'll try to link as many of those videos below because summer is the time for travel. And as I've said in other videos, so is the winter. And, you know, we're traveling for the holidays. And most of these tips will apply no matter what season it is, what time of the year it is, or where you're going. So I hope you find some of these tips helpful. I'm just going to be sitting here talking to you today, and I hope that maybe you can implement some in your travels to make life a little bit easier. So before you start budgeting for your vacation and working on your vacation fund, the first few things you need to think about is where you're going, how you're getting there, and what you plan on doing once you're there. When you figure out those three things, it makes it so much easier to plan. Now, obviously, um, you know, that sounds really easy, but the truth is, say you find an island with great deals on, you know, um, rooms or a resort um, type of place, and you, it, it's a great deal, but your flights are really expensive, but you're going to be doing a lot of stuff um, right there on the beach that doesn't cost that much or you're sticking to your resort. So, you know, things shake out in really weird ways sometimes when you're planning for a vacation. So you always want to find out, you know, where you're going if you're going to fly, drive, how you're going to get there, take a train. Scott and I traveled by train for a long time. And what you want to do when you get there. All those things um, help you determine how much money you need to set aside for your vacation. And for some people, that setting aside, um, you know, an estimated amount that you have came up with in your head when you figured out how much it's going to cost you to lodge, how much it's going to cost you to get there and get home, and how much it's going to cost you to hang out there and eat and do activities. So once you kind of have a general amount in mind, you can start setting aside money weekly, bi-weekly, however you get paid or your husband gets paid, however you can. Um, you can also use tax returns if you get them back. We're not so lucky. Um, you can also you know, use money that you get in from Christmas from family or, um, you know, I have a friend who actually has um, a decent sized family. She has four kids, husband and wife, and they save their change all year long just for a one family vacation. Um, last year it was down to Disney. And when you take that many kids, it can be rather expensive, but she saves the change all year long for vacation. Depending on how many children you have, that could be a real possibility. Um, so it's something that, you know, you can do um, and you just have to start dedicating some money and setting it aside. Um, if you get bonuses, you can take it out of bonuses. Um, my husband gets a big commission check generally in the middle of the month and we can usually pull aside a big amount out of that to put towards any vacation that we want to take. So generally, that's how we would pull out the money during that time. Now, there's lots of deals out there to be had. But one thing that you should remember when you're checking your travel sites, you want to make your browser private. And you can do that up in your settings. It's very easy. You can Google how to do that. But travel sites will take your information and remember it. And they will just up the rates every time you get back on the website. I swear it's true. Make your browsers private when you're looking for airline, you know, deals and hotel deals on those Travelocity sites, um, you know, all the other sites are, that are out there that we all know about um, that we search for cheap flights on. So you definitely want to um, disable your 
your you know open browser make it now private. I think it's important to set um, a budget for me um, vacations are supposed to be wonderful deserved amounts of time for you and your family and your friends where you really shouldn't stress over money or how quickly your savings account is going down so I think that when you get everything lined up with your hotel and your room well your room um, with your hotel and your um, um, travel on how you're getting there and getting back if you're driving if you get your gas money saved up or if you're flying if you get your ticket spot or if you're going by train and again tickets you know are bought then it's time to set up a daily allowance and it sounds you know very juvenile I get that even in my life, um, we need to set a daily balance sometimes because Scott and I are great spenders. We can spend, 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 and we can go over, you know, our budget very quickly. So I think, you know, if you can figure out a daily balance that you can control yourself on with your debit or credit card, that what's that's what works best. Now, you can also do that, um, figure out your daily allowance, use the envelope system and put in your daily allotted amount of money in each envelope, lock it in the safe at the hotel um, or wherever you're staying. Most of them have a safe. And I like to pad it by 10 or 15% just in case you go over. So, um, find what works for you. Figure out how much you think you're going to need to do the activities that you and your family um, want to enjoy while you're out and about on vacation. And, you know, it's very simple. You, you know, I don't think you should be like a slave to your itinerary, but I do think it's important to kind of roadmap where you're going, um, like, for um, tourism, where you're going to look and where you're going to, you know, see and enjoy and what amusement parks maybe you're going to or where you're going to be spending your your play money at. Figure out how much you're really going to need and then again, break it down day by day. You can do it, you know, day by day per family or day by day per family member, however you need to do it. But it does help kind of keep you on track where you're not worried the whole time on vacation. You're not flipping out on the way home when you are realizing that you are broke. It's easier just to make that daily allowance and stick to it. It really, really is. Another tip I have is the exchange rates. Now, we are leaving the country on this vacation, and exchange rates are important. Like, our dollar is basically worth only 80 cents where we're going, but you need to call your credit card companies. Make sure you can use those cards out of the country. Very big tip, something all of us need to do, and it's always cheaper to exchange the money there in the country where you go, you're always going to get the best rates there opposed to here at home. I know that sounds a little crazy, but it's true. You always are better off to get, um, you know, the exchange um, done where you're going instead of doing it ahead of time. I'm pretty sure I shared this tip already along the way, but a big budget tip is be careful of souvenirs. For me, there's a lot of people that I could buy for. There really is. Generally, what I do is stick to magnets for 90% of my um, gifts and, um, you know, from from wherever I went and then t-shirts for the kids or, you know, maybe the house sitter. But I really do not go crazy on souvenirs for other people. I simply don't. Um, you know, my kids, obviously, if they're not going, I will get souvenirs for. Um, and again, I like magnets, you guys. Magnets are cheap and cute and everybody likes a magnet on their refrigerator sometimes you know in a lot of homes so magnets work for me but be careful don't be lured in on souvenirs a lot of that stuff you don't have to have you really don't need and um sometimes you'll spend way more than what you should so be careful when you're picking out souvenirs don't get carried away and lose your budget on on stuff that really isn't necessary Another tip that I have found helpful is to eat local food. When you eat at the bar at the hotel or the restaurant at the hotel or room service, you're not getting the best prices, that's for sure. You're going to spend way more. And if you eat local, you're going to get better, fresher food. 
Um, you're going to meet the people. You're going to be in the element a little more. And it's going to be better. And it's going to save you money. Of course, you can go to the grocery store. I don't know really who does that anymore. I have never went to the grocery store and bought groceries. I mean, I have taken stuff with me. And I have went to the grocery store when I'm staying in a cabin in Tennessee or something like that. But when I go on a big vacation, I really don't want to eat the same food I can eat every single day at home. So I try to... Um, you know, budget appropriately for meals. And that's something where we can all do better. A lot of the times at the rest stops and at the welcome centers, you can find books with coupons to those local restaurants, especially in the U.S. Um, like us this year, we're going on a cruise. So all the food is inclusive that we have on the boat. It's wonderful. It's in the price. I did a video a while back on my 10 reasons for really loving a cruise for vacation, for a family vacation. I'll link that below because, you know, really, you guys, a cruise is a phenomenal way to go. You got unlimited food, entertainment. I mean, you do have to pay for gambling. You do have to pay for alcohol. I don't drink. It's not that big of a deal. Might live in something fruity or something, but nothing like serious. And it's a great bargain, but you do have to be careful that you do not go overboard on dinners. I personally have found, I know a lot of people don't really agree with this, but buffets, when you take a variety of people like our older kids to our younger kids, buffets work great. And, you know, I'm not always fond of buffets, but morning breakfast buffets if your hotel does not offer them that's a big plus um and everybody can find something they like um they're generally not that expensive um there's a lot of seafood buffets when you're down by the beach or near the ocean um you know it's 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 a it's a task to find good food at a decent price when you're eating out on vacation. But you can do it. Utilize the coupons online. Utilize the books that you find at the welcome centers. Ask the locals. Find out what's good around. You don't always have to go out to a big steak dinner. You can go out to, you know, um, a, a local restaurant in the areas. Try something new. Um, and just, you know, be careful what your budget is for eating because generally I find it always needs to be raised up just a little bit. So, you know, most of all, I think when you go on vacation, patience is key. Things are not always going to go your way. Luggage is going to get lost sometimes. You're going to lose tickets. You might lose a passport. Um, you know, it might rain on a day you planned on being out doing something. Um, you know, you just have to have patience and you have to be willing to go with the flow a little bit better um, during that time because it can turn into a rather stressful time. And like I said, who wants to go, you know, on a vacation where you're only going to be stressed out more? Now, I think, you know, what is genius now is you can snap pictures of your passport, your ID, your um, insurance cards, all of it on your phone. You can email it to yourself so you have it um, in your email, not just on the on the SD card on your phone. Or if your pictures are like mine and back up automatically to Facebook, um, it's still handy to have them in your email. So before you leave, I would be snapping documents of everything um, with the camera on my phone. Um, and then either email it to myself or, you know, Facebook obviously has them because it automatically does that. Google Plus does that awesome. Now, um, Google Fly is another wonderful tip for you guys. It is a service that is offered by Google that helps you find the lowest flights. It's one of my favorites. It's not talked about a lot, but I will link it below in case that's something that you're interested in. Um, Again, I think, you know, as if you can, try to leave room in your suitcase. I will have more suitcase packing videos coming up very, very soon. They're going to be coming up um, all week long, so just keep watching. Um, but I think, you know, if you can leave some room in there for any souvenirs that you want to buy yourself or anything else that you want to bring back from your vacation, it's always beneficial to do that. Definitely weigh your suitcases, but I'll have all of that in more um, packing videos coming up, as I said. Um, I think if you're traveling within the United States, it's important to download the, the Yelp app. There's so much information city to city on that app. It will be so beneficial to anybody or any family that's traveling. Um, you know, you guys, it's just about 
being prepared, being organized, and um, thinking things out. The longer you have to prepare, the better off you are. I like to prepare as early as I can. And, you know, I know not all the trips are necessarily um, planned trips. A lot of our families have emergencies where you're just tossing stuff in the suitcase and you're hitting the road for whatever emergency that has came up. And when you're packing like that, I understand just tossing stuff in and get getting out. But when you have time to plan and you have time to figure out really what you need packing wise and where you're going and how much you need to be budgeting and how much your daily allowance should be for all of the different things you plan on doing. I think the longer you have to do that, the better off you are. Now, I always think it's best to pack a little bit lighter on clothes and stuff and take more cash. I've always found that more helpful. I'd rather have the cash than usually the extra clothes. Um, but definitely, um, you know, make time to plan. Do the very best you can to plan out everything you want to do and try to stick to it. But also try to be understanding when that plan doesn't always go the way you want it to go. It happens to all of us. I'm going to be vlogging all the way through my vacation and you guys are going to get to see those videos when I come back and you're probably going to see that not everything works out exactly the way I want. So I hope some of these tips have been helpful to you guys. I have a lot of packing videos and some other videos coming up. I do have a giveaway going on right now for the Erin Condren 2016 Life Planner. I would love for you guys to get entered. Head over to my blog at kjaggers.com You'll find the video, you'll find the entry form, that link is below, and you can get entered for your chance to win the new life planner. I'm excited about that giveaway. So again, if you have any questions or comments, I would love if you left those below. If I'm not answering right away, that just means I'm out and about on vacation. I don't get a lot of service on the big boat, so um, I'll only be checking my email periodically, but I will be reading your comments and answering them when I get back home. So again, thank you guys so much much for watching. I'll see you really soon. Bye.